So hi everyone, my name is Arnav Bhatti and I am uh, currently working at Red Hat as a senior consultant in the consulting services team for Germany. So what I do, I just implement the products at enterprise level or at customer's site. And today we're going to talk about event driven Ansible, which has, which is like really required by everyone in the IT organization. And we're going to look at some of the use cases and how you could use it in your organization or in your team or whatever automation you're trying to do. So let's begin. We would just have a brief introduction. And another thing would be, why do we need event driven Ansible? Why there are so many things which are coming up? So what's the challenge? Some of the use cases, resources, which would help you to actually play along on this EDA at whenever you are at home or whenever you have free time. And then we would have some time for the Q&A session. OK. So ju to just give you an overview, what exactly is event driven Ansible? So if we look at, or oh, let me just go to the next slide. Have you ever read these messages in your email? You get an automated email saying, this utilization of this machine is 98%. Please clear some space. What exactly is that? It's just a traditional method where the particular machine is actually telling you that please remove some of the un unwanted files. I'm going to blow up. And how do you solve it? What are the next steps? An engineer would see this particular mail or from a ticket. They would start working on it. And what they're going to do? They would just clean up the space manually and then follow up. But now for a second, let's imagine if there was some mechanism through which this could automatically be remediated on its own. There could have been an event which said, OK, the disk space is more than 90% or whatever. This event has been captured by Ansible. And then automatically, it finds out certain files which could be removed. Or let's say the log files, which are older than 30 days or 90 days, whatever policy you could set. How much time it could have saved for an organization, for the team, or for the operations guy? Just imagine. So that's why we need event-driven automated ops everywhere. Whether you are an operations team, whether you are a developer team, it doesn't matter. If you want to actually invest time in innovation rather than just doing some manual work, you need to have this particular approach. So OK, let's let, let the people be in. OK. So what exactly? the old way or let's say what was the older way of doing things was that you had an outage it was made in such issue there was a huge escalation and that was always an reactive approach that something has occurred and now we are reacting towards it to resolve it but with event driven and civil automation what i personally feel is it's more a proactive approach that you know what's going to happen and you could remediate it beforehand that's the beauty of using event driven ansible so we talked about digitalization. And now how exactly, what exactly is the process of an EDA? So the first part would be receiving an event. This could be any event. Let's say you pushed your code in a GitHub repository or any Git repositories. That's an event. What, you, what are you going to do now? You know that, OK, there are certain checks which needs to be done. Then let's say there could be multiple other events. Uh, you want to check a web server URL. You just want to say curl to that particular web server URL and see if it's healthy or not, or what's the HTTP response code for that particular service. So you would first receive all the events. Second part would be, what do you want to do with that particular event? For example, if the web server URL is down, you would want to make the web service again up and running, right? That you need to decide on the response part. That is completely in your hands. And then, respond automatically. So for example, once you have automatically uh, decided on the response, you could update all your incident tickets in ITSM or ServiceNow or whatever tool which your company is using. You could simply create incidents, uh, notify the teams, and then everything is automated. So are you guys with me with automation? Perfect. So we talked about. The, uh, these are the key building blocks in EDA. Again, as I said, we are going to see. I have a quick demo for you. I hope I'm going to show it in the last five minutes. But 
the key elements are sources which we does discuss there are plenty sources which eda offers url check and uh, web server check etc 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 then the rules because for every event you need a rule if then what and then the action what do you want to do with that particular rule okay and now let's deep dive into some of the use cases which we have been personally using for our enterprise customers to remediate certain things so one important aspect is fact and ticket enrichment so what happens is let's say for example you have an incident raised or let's say a service now ticket which is raised but who is going to feed or input that information to that service ticket what if i tell you that ansible could collect all the facts from the machine and could put it in that particular ticket instance making it much more informative so right now let's say there's an incident which have which is there and it says okay disk utilization is 98% but you don't know the details what if there was some more information towards it what if that uh, the ansible could have checked which files are occupying which how much space and then with all that information you could gather and uh, store this information in the ticket itself the owner of that particular ticket would be then very proactive in understanding the root cause the solution and what needs to be done so this would reduce your time to actually resolve the problem so initiate the change management act on event safely without impacting systems those are some of the very important use cases and let me tell you guys we are using we are using service now which is i believe is used in most of the companies so eda integrates pretty well with service now in enriching and enhancing this ticketing system that's the entire workflow how it's going to work there would be the first part would be the source which we have already discussed decision making and workflows the rules which we are going to decide and then the automation part would come with the integration on service now enriching the particular tickets so it would simply say observe use events and update service now cmdb that's one of the use case another use case would be observing the code let's say for example we were talking about the web server uh, web server is down and you would want to check it what if i already create a rule with the name that the port is down and in the condition i have said that the admin if the port if my uh, event field admin status is down then run this playbook ticket escalation event.yaml what it's going to do this particular piece of code which you are seeing right now over here it would gather all the information from the kafka uh, source it would observe changes it would see if this particular port 9092 is down and then it would create an incident on your behalf that is something what i was talking about so no manual intervention of what is down when is down how is down this creation of the tickets itself which is required for the management would be done automatically so that's one of the major use cases which you could use with the eda second would be once you have identified the issue now it's up to you whether it's a very critical issue where manual intervention is needed or do you think if it let's say if uh, it's a test environment or a dev environment where you would need to have automatic remediation of that issue so that's second use case that what you're going to do is you would just remediate or heal that particular issue within your defined rules and the actions which are being done on that particular rule set so in this particular thing we are just checking the web app applications in my sources if you see i have defined a url check source and these are the urls which i want to check now if my applications or my urls are down i'm going to redeploy the mobile app.yaml that's what eda is going to do for you and we are going to see that in the demo right now third and very interesting use case would be insights so anyone who is aware about how insights work anyone has used red hat insights okay few of you perfect so just to or everyone so that everyone is on the same page insights is something which gathers all the information of your linux systems and it tells you whether there's a security risk which is there and it gives you all the insightful information on a console now if you have this data automatically you could react to that particular data let's say there is a new security vulnerability which has been found on any of the realm machines you would want to act immediately on it you with help of event driven ansible what you could do is 
you could find out these insights events create again your sources rule books and then remediate them so this is how it would work so it would just now over here in the sources if you see i have used another source which is called as webhook and depending on that particular uh, status i am going to run my playbook so these are i would say main use cases or let's say at least these are something which we are using in the in our organization to actually remediate all of them automatically and let's say we have done with the slides let me show you some demo yeah that's my favorite slide by the way huh? okay so over here i have an eda example i'm using a url check that's my http web server and i've defined if my status is up of the web server or down based on that i am just running my uh playbooks with these files let me quickly open them all is up and well and the another one is fix web.yaml so if something goes wrong it it fixes the website it replaces it with the code with the basic one and then it's automatically remediated yes please tags as in well, so a lot of my uh, tags use tags yeah 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 you can call the from from the definition hmm. can i define tags when calling the the table i need to check on this but i'm pretty sure it would be possible okay. but i can get back to you on this i can also look it up oh okay. perfect see we have a solution already so that's awesome okay so now what i'm going to do is i would explicitly just show you uh, i would call the web server this is just a basic page and i would remove the file so i'm remo removing my index.html and before that this is my rule engine where all my rules are running for now it says all is up and well as soon as i delete this file let's see what's happening in the rule book okay it, earlier it said all is up and well now it says website is down and you see the magic oh, happening over here now if i just go back to my web server it's back running again it never impacted my system there was an impact for a few seconds but it was automatically remediated that's how eda works guys and i think we just have 2 minutes left so i would take all the questions now and by the way if you guys want to play along with this particular demo you could use it uh, i have provided all the resources in the slides which i am going to upload so all the resources i would be available over here let me just make it larger yeah perfect so over here you could play along with all these labs go home try it out and see if this is a real use case for your team or for your organization so any questions guys yes please so uh, ansible rule book is the backend which is regularly checking all the the, the things to be done right that's correct so the question i would just repeat is ansible rule book the backbone which is actually checking everything or all the events the answer is yes the in the rule book you defined what needs to be done when an event is uh, received so your event listener should be up and running it could be an kafka event listener which would be automatically uh, you know listening for some topics or queues or some messages if that particular message matches your event rule book then it would trigger the action associated to it yes please so with this structure of like event driven uh, rule based ansible hmm. Hmm. So, um, I know like as consultants, probably the answer would be it depends. But um, do you have any experience on that? Building up, let's say, more complex workflows that where actually events um, across different um, within 
Hmm. Well, as in consultant, I would answer it depends. But, <laughs> but yes, that's true. That if let's say if you have thousands of events which are running in, and if you have to just create thousands of you know rules according to those events that run this, run this, it can get complex. So a better way of doing it would be that you split it up as per your event source. Let's say you just have in one event source for one particular web service. So that's how you break it down in modules, and then it's pretty easy to actually manage it. So that's how at least I'm doing it to make my life easy. I do not like complex things. I want to keep things simple and automated. Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, okay. 